This is the video lesson for impulse. The learning target for this lesson is, I am learning to define impulse by identifying its formula, and to calculate impulse using real world examples. Success criteria for this lesson are, I can define impulse, I can identify the formula for impulse, and I can identify the correct units for impulse. So what is impulse? So an impulse is a change of momentum by applying a force over a period of time. So you can apply a large force over a short period of time to change something's momentum, or you can apply a small force over a longer period of time to change its momentum. So we have a large force over a small short period of time or a small period of time, or a small force over a large period of time. Both of those would equal the same momentum change, the same change of momentum. So some examples of impulse would be seat belts, highway safety barriers, or crash mounts. These are all ways to change something's momentum by applying a force over a period of time. So here we have an example of a crash mat. So this person jumps from a height. He's got a lot of velocity, a lot of momentum, and he hits this crash mat. And the crash mat takes that force and spreads it out over a longer period of time. So a big force spread out over a long period of time. So a big force over a long period of time. If the person just hit the ground straight up, they would have a big force over a very short period of time. So that equals a lot of damage to the, to the body. But because they hit the crash mat, they are spreading out that force over this long period of time. So it does a lot less damage to the body. That is the idea of, of impulse, momentum change. All right, so let's look at the formula for impulse. So we have J for impulse because I is taken already for current. So we have F times delta T equals M times delta V. And this is the impulse momentum theorem. So we call that. All right, so let's look at what our variables stand for here. So we have F equals force delta T is equal to change in time. We have M for mass. And we have V, delta V is the change in velocity. And so delta V then stands for the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So we have the force times the amount of time it takes to apply that force is equal to our mass times the change in velocity. And notice that, remember that P is equal to mass times velocity. So this is equal to the change in velocity. So mass times delta V is, is equal to the change in momentum. And force times time is how you change an object's momentum. All right, let's look at units for impulse. So we have the f units for force is newtons. Units for time is seconds. So we have newton seconds. And then for mass, we have kilograms. And for velocity, we have meters per second. So we have kilograms, meters per second, and newtons seconds. And these are identical to each other. So newton seconds and kilogram meters per second, these are equal to each other. And often for impulse, we'll use the newton second. That's the units we'll most often be using for, for impulse. All right, so look out for video number two on impulse where we'll go over examples on how to solve questions about impulse. So examples on how to solve questions on impulse.
All right, everybody, keep asking questions. It's how you learn new things.